Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsy coming back with another bullseye of a tutorial here today on the channel. I wanted to talk about the legend, none other than himself, Mr. Future. I also wanted to talk today about DJ Esco, Metro Boomin, and RIP Seth Ferkins. You know, I want to really dive deep into how you know these guys was able to make history. So if you guys do have any more questions or comments or any different suggestions for artists y'all want to see it, go ahead and drop it down below. I'm more than happy to get to it. And today we got a lot to unravel. So all of these presets are gonna be free today it's gonna be a little pack it's gonna be more than one thing that we're looking at today so let's jump right into it so you know future is a very interesting person because you know he was one of those persons who was really pushing the autotune sound you know in 2012 and you know before autotune was always considered like a pop type of like just an effect kind of like vocal vo vocoder or vocodex or whatever it's called you know or like just any type of other effect but future was the one that really took it into a, a situation where he was really being lyrical with it and he really made that autotune like really big because he was actually rapping with it. Lil Wayne is another person who was doing that as well. So let's look at this here today. You know, the whole team starting off with somebody like DJ Esco. DJ Esco, you got to understand that he is, um, you know, an important part of the team. Like I always say, you know, these rappers, they got a whole team. You got to build a team. I know that right now you probably in your home studio and you, you're you forced to do everything right now. But down the line, you definitely do want to meet people who are good at making music. And they also understand you as a person because making music is all about the connection. I can tell, like just looking at this picture and a couple other pictures that DJ Esco and Future definitely that's his dog that's his brother bro like it just so happens that they make music so that's the thing about music it's all about the connection with the people like let's just look at them they homeboys like they really homeboys they really tapped in and they made classic music they made great music but it just so happens that they really brothers it just so happens that they making music so like i say it's always about the relationships that you building with these people that you putting into the music that's what makes the music sound good that's the true secret to getting good music all right so then after that you know let's look at this right away you know um after that you know future had a guy like Seth Ferguson. He was also part of the team. So it's kind of like a basketball team. Somebody, everybody got a position. Everybody got their assignment. DJ Esco, you know, he was the guy who had the ear imagination. He was in the club. He was DJing the shows. He was mixing. He was making beats. And then you had Seth Ferguson who he was mixing and he was been tapped in with Future all the way since like what, 2013, 2014. So he was been with Future. And you know, that's the thing about Future. It was always about consistency. He always had that right hand man, which was Seth Ferguson always with him by his side. So let's look at how, you know, um, Future developed too you know future went on to have his own little studio and all that like so you know future's got his own studio as well you know in atlanta as well which is five star productions which is a very nice studio you know you also got his other engineer um eric manko as well so there's a whole team here you know it's behind the scenes metro booming is also important too um so let's also look at that as well you know metro booming he was that point guard he was constantly supplying the beats constantly supplying the bangers the futures you know futures like feed me more feed me more metro booming was that chef he was giving future them beats and he was making all them hits them boys went on a crazy run and what i'm trying to tell y'all boys so let's look at how you know usually future will be recording his vocals so it looks like future's chain was pretty consistent all of the time every time they went to the studio seth said if y'all don't got this chain i don't you know i'm not vibing with y'all boys like that you know i, I don't care what y'all boys got going on if y'all don't have this chain we're not recording at your studio essentially the industry standard which is the neve preamp and of course we know the neve preamp uh you know it works so well on somebody like um on somebody like Future's voice because Future, you know, his voice is kind of deep, but the Neve is just so good because it has a transformer in it, which of course it plays into the strengths of Future. It has a transistor and it's just something that's so tonally balanced. That's the Neve has the weight from the transformer and a little bit of the spiky buzz from the transistor, but the Neve is pretty versatile for rap, rock, and many sources because it just simply works. And that's the thing about making music. You want consistency. You want something that continuously works day in and day out. You don't want to have too many variables. So that's one thing that feature was big on consistency you feel me um you know consistently getting recorded by the same dude for like what how many years before unfortunately he passed away it's all about consistency in his music to get longevity you know so after that the microphone that feature always will use and that he also has in his studio as well is the uh, neumann 87 and the neumann 87 i'm actually talking into this microphone right now so there's the uh, vintage version then there's also the um the newer version which is the ai so you know in a situation like that we would be using this microphone this microphone is absolutely 
absolutely incredible. It's so flat in the mid range, which is pretty good for Future's voice because his voice is kind of you know deep a little bit like that, and you don't want um you know to be doing too much in the mid range. You know his you know it picks up all the nuances, all of the swag, all the tone. Gee, 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 when he's doing his ad libs, when he's in the studio going crazy on them. You know this microphone is consistently here, and Future literally has a stereo pair in his studio. His studio is set up so nicely, like where you know if somebody's coming in for a feature, we can go back and forth because my side got a microphone and your side got a microphone and it's the same microphone same vocal chain neve going into the uh 87 going into the cl1b so the cl1b is pretty important too because like i said it's a a, a compressor with a, a variable attack and release optical compressors you know a lot of optical compressors like a la2a 3a 4a a tla summit like they don't really let you get in and dial in so in a situation like this i saw that in a the actual studio where future has you know seth Ferg was talking about how it's all about vibe and that's what i'm always trying to talk about when it comes to making music like being an engineer working in the studio late night you know when when seth died future was like man you know five o'clock that was always the best time when we'd be making music and i peeped that too because even when i'm working in the studio five o'clock four o'clock three o'clock in the morning those are like the times when the inspiration happens and i just wanted to show you guys something too because there's this video here for an example where it's metro booming and um you know uh future they they all in the studio and he's making slave master so let's look at that real quick Now you see that right there, how when Future was rapping and then that little ringtone went off at the same time and somebody was in the comments like, oh, isn't that so funny? But bruh, if you really be in the studio and you really be engineering, it comes to a point where it's like, damn, God is working. Like God is literally working where like everything is just syncing up and it's all about the energy and all about the vibe. So that's why I be trying to get y'all to understand. It's not about the equipment. It's about the love for the game. Then you got to surround yourself with people who love making music too, like Metro Boomin, DJ Esco, Seth Frickens. Them boys all love the music too so it's like we all on the same vibe and then stuff's like stuff like that happens like all the time in the studio there's nothing new but i think y'all should watch this video because it's like so interesting how future was going in there and he was just trying to figure it out i feel like future was possessed bro i feel like he was possessed by god like god was using him as a as a as a vessel to get them lyrics out for slave master and then man future didn't even know he was making a classic bro so yeah that's another thing that future does when he he raps he don't he don't be writing his lyrics you know he goes into the studio and he catches a vibe and i think that uh, some Something like the Apollo Twin is really good to catch a vibe. So, you know, usually Future goes in the studio like this. You know, how about a new whip? I'm feeling way better. I'm feeling way better. How about a new whip, nigga? Like I'm a slave master. I bought two zip, nigga. I'm feeling way better. I'm feeling way better. You feel me? Like Future goes into the studio like he goes into the studio like this, bro. He catches a vibe, you know. Then, you know, Steph, Seth always said he would put a little bit of reverb in the headphones for future, too, you know. How about a new whip, nigga? Like I'm a slave master. How about a two zip, nigga? I'm feeling way better. Freaking brown pussy. Got my chula. How about a bubble to get on the doodle? Do a bubble, bubble, you go. Do a do Like. <laughs> Y'all boys got to understand it's all about catching the vibe. You feel me? Like instantly, like I'm going to keep it real. If you don't have an Apollo twin, low key, I'm going to keep it real with you. You low key cannot compete. Like you low-key cannot compete because this is the fact that I don't know. I can't think of any other interface. Maybe y'all let me know down below that will give you the um, auto-tune and the reverb in the headphones like the way the Apollo does. Some people say, yeah, you know, I figured it out with my computer and I got the low latency auto-tune. You know, people, I made a video about that. People was trying to get on me, but you got to understand Nick perspective. You know, I'm always talking from a position where I got hella people watching my videos. So I can't just tell people, oh, get any old computer and just get auto-tune low latency. And it will, I can't do that. You feel me? That's why you got to understand my perspective too. Like when I tell y'all stuff, it's because I'm trying to get you the stuff that's going to work. So as soon as you get in there, like now you can catch your vibe. But the main thing about this with the auto tune and the headphones is that it gives people confidence. It makes them feel good about themselves. You know, when they hear the auto tune and they hear the reverb, now they, they, they catching the vibe. You know, it's all about confidence. That's what I always try to talk about. You know, music is not just about, oh yeah, it's a well-written song. It's a hot beat. No, like you got to go in there and catch a vibe and you can pay attention too. Let's go back to 
this video with Future. You know, this man Future, he understands vibes. He understands energy. Look, he got so much people in the studio with him. Friends, family. Look at that. Look at everybody in the studio with him. He understands this stuff. This is the stuff that helps you make it in music. Understanding that, yo, you know, people are important. You know, life, um, music is about life and life is about people. You feel me? So he understands I got to keep a bunch of people in the studio with me because their energy is contributing. Even if they're not making music, even if they're not coming in, their energy, their reaction is contributing to the man's music it bro and you know god is on his side too because if you watch this video and you hear how he's just like he's just trying to figure out the lyrics like but the tune is helping him too you know the tune is helping him keep it in melody you know so that's the thing about future he understands that making music is not just about making music it's about the people and that's what i'm trying to tell y'all so y'all could blow i want to see y'all blow so let's look into this so y'all gonna get that vocal um pack for free and also let's go ahead and start looking into this uh, you know this full future template so i know seth you Usually in a future studio, he has a distressor. He has a stereo pair of distressor. So for something like an 808, you know, even in a situation like this, you know, coming back to a guy like Metro Boomin, this man Metro Boomin, you know what he does? He just picks the best sounds. I'm telling you, there's so many like drum kits and so many packs of Metro Boomin already out there. So it's not like you don't have access to the same sounds. Y'all boys got to stop making excuses. The way to get good at making music is loving the game, is loving making music, doing it every day, being simple, being effective, like they said it right here, you know. Um, and look at look at this session. Like, there's nothing going on, really. Like, he just leaves it alone. You know, Seth, he's very non-invasive. He knows it's all about the vibe. Like, don't do anything to mess up the vibe. You know, the vibe is so important. The vibe always comes first, bro. Every engineer going to say that. Maybe some of these engineers on YouTube, they're not going to say that because they don't really record people. They don't really be in the studio like that, which is okay okay that's cool but i'm just telling you like when you in the studio at two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning four back to back every day you know like some shit always be happening to me when i be in the studio where it's like i go to the studio at eight o'clock thinking i'm only gonna do a two-hour session then somebody calls me they do another two hours and some other client calls me next thing you know i'm in the studio all the way till four o'clock and it's those moments like that when you in the studio late at night when you realize do i really like making music you know that's the difference between you and the next person who's trying to work to take that same spot so that's important to understand you know with metro Boomin, you know he just loves making music that's his secret to why he's so good zaytoven he did a, a breakdown of morilla his secret he, he didn't use any the plugins you, you can see on the screen there's nothing that he's hiding the secret to making good music is loving making music but it's easy for me to say that it's so easy to say you gotta love making music but it's different because you gotta grab that bit out of your heart and pull it out and put it into the music that's not something that can be faked you know somebody who don't really like making music you know you could hear that music and it sound good but you're just gonna sit here like this it sound good but it's somebody that don't let you get into it because the energy is not real the love is not genuine so you're gonna feel it so that's the thing about making music all right so in future Fu uh, studio he know he got a couple of rooms and the most important thing too in this template that we model is that he's got a couple of ssl um boards in there like one of them is the nucleus and another one is the um uh, the, the xl xl desk 24 and i think he has like the aws too as well so you know eric manco he was the guy that you know he put it in there um so yeah that's pretty important because in my template i have all of the uh, ssl channels with the, the summing in it as well and that's just kind of modeling some of the harmonic distortion the non-linearities that you get that just make the music sound relatable so that's where it comes back to dj esco because dj esco he got the ear imagination you know he already knows what a song gonna sound like in the club before the 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 the, the um the song even dropped that's why dj esco is so important bro he has the ear imagination i always try to tell y'all that ear imagination is important you know it's kind of like if you go to the store you see a pair of shoes, you're like, nah, I already know them shoes not going to look good on me because you already have the imagination to know that it's not going to look good on you. DJ Esco has the same thing, but with his ears. That's a basic skill that you need as an engineer. If you're a beat maker, you get a fire loop. You need the ear imagination to know like, oh, I'm going to put the 808 right here. I'm going to put the drum right here. I'm going to put the kick in the bass right Like, you need the ear imagination. If you're a rapper, you get a fire beat. Like, let's say Future get F up, F up some commas. He got to listen to the beat and let the beat talk to him and use the ear imagination to, to know what lyrics he going to put down. So that's what I'm trying to help y'all understand. You know, you got to harvest your creativity, your imagination. That's what's going to help you blow and making music, bro. It's not the equipment, bro. The equipment don't got nothing to do with nothing, bro. You could still use a Apollo console and get the same sound as Future. You literally heard me just messing around right there. And I had it kind of sounding like Future a little bit for half a second. Now, if I would have really had the beat in there, I probably could have sounded exactly like Future just because it's not even about Future. It's not about 
about the equipment. It's about the love for the game. Future likes making music. I love making music. As long as you love making music, you always going to get the same outcome, which is a good, genuine outcome. All right, let's start talking about the template. Let's go over it quick. I will use the distressor on the 808. You know, the Seth, you know, he had a stereo pair of distressors in Future's, um, you know, um, studio. And the distressor is pretty good because it's way more responsive. Usually you use something like an optical compressor because it has a slow release and a slow attack because it's going to clamp down the bass. You know, usually with Metro Boomin's beats, everything else is jumping around. You know, the hi-hat, the snare, everything is jumping around. The, the back um, snares are jumping around. So you usually want something like the bass to anchor it. And we would use the distressor because it's way more responsive than any other optical compressor. So, you know, you, I would put it on 10 to 1, slow attack, you know, slow release. And then pretty much, yeah, I'll probably do 1 to 3 dB. And yeah, even the distressor is overpowered for 808s because you also have the distortion modes. And sometimes distortion is good because it helps add some of those like saturation that helps the um, bass image well. That's what the bass is always about, helping the image well. And then after that, you know, we will have something for the kick, like the pull tech. The pull tech is extremely musical. You know, this is the low shelf right here. And that would just give the uh, kick a lot of weight, a lot of beef. You know, a lot of the time, Seth would not even use this stuff anyways. But just in case, if you do need it, you know, pull tech is amazing because it has tubes. So the part of that tube sound is what gives it the beef. And also the fact that it has some very broad EQ curves, you know, so these three controls are linked. This is a low shelf, right? So I'm actually going to show you guys today. I'm actually going to show you guys today. Um, so this is what uh, the, the shape of a pull tech looks like. Okay. I'm going to show you all right now. So a low shelf is this. So the pull tech, the EQ is not the same way, you know, because this is like the low shelf. You know, when you're doing a pull tech boost like this, this is what you're doing. But when you come to these right here, this becomes a bell. So it's like this. You see, this is a shelf where it's boosting everything, you know, going down. But this is a bell where it's only boosting like this, you know, around. So this one is kind of like around the corner. This, in, this one is like everything behind it, you know. But still, it's just a very musical, very musical EQ. And you get to adjust the Q as well. So the pull tech is is pretty interesting you know and then after that you know for the snare i probably wouldn't have anything you know metro booming he always picked the best sounds that's the thing as a, a beat maker as long as you pick the best sounds all of those sounds are already compressed eq and saturated so what more work do you need to do you need to just pick the best sounds you know that's what you know my bro um cecil shout out cecil he's a professional producer he been he been killing the game for so long and he always tells me like first of all he told me nick you're not a you're not a beat maker you ask you need to quit state the rapping and engineering and he blessed me with that you feel me because that made me so good and that's what you need too you need real friends who gonna keep it real with you you feel me but also as well he always tells me that he just picks the best sounds and th that's true bro because all of these sounds are already eq'd and saturated and the thing about it is that as a beat maker you want to just make hella beats hella beats hella beats hella quantity you feel me so you know keep feeding that man future keep feeding him keep feeding him he's a beast man he's beast mode bro literally then uh, you know seth also had an api as well eq as well he also had a um a api 527 in the studio which is like the mono version of the api 2500 also i'd probably use a dbx for the hi-hats the dbx has a, a you know automatic attack and release and it really just knows how to clamp down on things so well it's so musical i probably do one to three db just to really keep those hi-hats tamed under control and give it a little bit of some of that analog tone you know sm a smoothing characteristic that's something that these components also do as well Okay, and then for the drum bus, like I said again, you know, um, inside of the studio, um, you know, Seth does, uh, you know, long live Seth, but inside their studio, they have the API, uh, where is it, the 527, which is the mono version of the API 2500. It's kind of like the same thing, and of course, we do understand that the API has the 2520 op amp. This is VCA topology, and the thing about this, we would use it for a tonal characteristic, you know, just to really help the drums punch even harder if, if necessary. That's the thing that Seth always always did and he was so good about it he was non-invasive he you know that's the thing that's going to happen to you when you become mature at making music you know okay this is not the time for me to do anything to it it's one thing to know when you know when to do something to it but uh, it's a whole nother level when to say nah that does not need anything that's perfect it's completely perfect you know that's what separates the pros between the amateurs honestly and then after that you know you know a bunch of more ssl channels you know like eric manko he'd probably be mixing and getting some of that good summing you know maybe a little bit of eq here and there but for the most part seth you know uh you know i don't know really about eric you know eric he, his stuff isn't really out there like that which i respect because you know all, every, every engineer is different some of them like to be out there some of them don't but still 
you know, um, a, a lot of that, that good type of sound is coming from that summing. And the, the SSL is always very well known for rap music because it's just so punchy and it just has that perfect sound that is literally timeless. After that, you know, they have an LA 2A in their um, studio and I'll probably use the LA 2A on the all music bus just to get some of that tube saturation that's coming from the LA 2A. Also to help glue the instruments as well. You know, sometimes Future likes to have that atmospheric, synthy, long type of sustaining stuff. And the LA 2A is pretty good because that slow release will help all of that stuff image better you know using something like 1db will do the same exact thing you know applies to the um, 808 like how it would apply to the music as well you know long synth long sustaining stuff all that low end energy you know sometimes it could really get lost and clouded so you will use something like a la2a to help it image better and the reason why is because like i said the compression character but also because of the fact that it has the tube input in and out and the tube also gives it some saturation so it's important to understand these things now let's look at the chain that um seth usually uses for um features vocal so you know the cl1b as well as the neve is doing the heavy lifting but you got to understand that the mac dsp 202 is pretty overpowered too because it's giving some of that saturation and i think seth would use this roll off as well because sometimes i can relate to this if you have a deep voice sometimes the auto tune will start working a little bit too hard because the low end has a lot of energy to it like how i'm talking about you know it's a lot of energy that is slowly building up like how i just said with the 808 as well as the synths and the stuff that future likes to use in his music you know like jumping off the jet you know that song has a lot of sense like a lot of his music is like that spacey pluto you know and i think that the roll off for the mac dsp is pretty important before you hit the auto tune just due to the fact that a lot of that low end energy that mud the auto tune is not going to react to that type of stuff so that's pretty overpowered that seth would use that i was able to kind of see how he did that i would use 15 ips speed we understand that 15 ips is very neutral you know then use something like modern or vintage tape depending on the vibe as well as the bias so the bias is pretty interesting if you over bias it it will make it darker if you under bias it it will make it brighter so that's why i always talk about there's other ways to make a vocal bright sometimes you can use tape sometimes you can use a compressor you know and just not even compress at all the cl1b is something that i would use as well like that you know compressing you know just turn it on and like just to get the tube saturation you know so there's different ways of getting brightness it's not all about oh boost the EQ. <laughs> oh yeah go to this top and just crank up like it's not about that y'all boys you feel me there's different ways to get down the road do you want to take the bus do you want to drive you want to take a bike do you want to walk it's different ways to get to the same place you got to always understand that so the mac dsp is freaking overpowered i love it to juice up the two track beat i love it to put on the mix bus i love it for vocals as well cool all right next thing is seth used to do this amazing trick and this is kind of like what i always talk about as well michael brower is the first person that showed me this but sometimes you got to eq into the compression so a de-esser is a compressor essentially but it just has a side chain that is key to the, a certain frequency so it only compresses depending if you use wide band if you do wide it will compress the whole signal but if you do split band it will compress everything going from whatever this is up you feel me so seth is a genius what he did is he did like a pull tech type of thingy where he boost and he he's compressing at the like the same type of thing he's boosting and cutting at the same range and with this avid eq move is literally genius it's so genius because when you do this high shelf on this eq it just has this beautiful way of doing the air like but it's not necessarily air it's more like a crunchy type of snickers sweetness you know reese's buttercup type of crunchiness that really just tastes really good it really sounds so sweet and of course with future he rolls off a little bit lows not too much and he does a nice little um low mid cut you know because he's conforming to future's vocal okay cool so that's a genius move that I love to do in my personal template that Seth would always do. And then after that, you have a, a, a R compressor. You know, Seth always keeps it simple. Um, there's this thing that I never heard a pro engineer say before, but I think this is true, that the analog plugins are so freaking good that they start to step over the hardware like literally that I, I never heard nobody say that but the, i kind of feel like that having my hardware and working with hardware that that makes me work with more stock plugins that don't have no color because the analog plugins are so good i'm telling you to the point where it's like it's like what's the point of um adding them 
because you know they will do the same thing as um you know the plugins for example it's like if you if you cooking up a pot of soup or a pot of ribs or whatever and then you put lemon pepper seasoning on that beer right you got american lemon pepper then you have cajun or uh, european lemon pepper then you put it on it now it don't even taste like lemon pepper no more because you put the same flavor on top of the same flavor so i feel like seth knew that it too as well you know i feel like a lot of engineers know that as well that's why they use stock templates uh, stock plugins because if you have gear already it's kind of like using analog plugins is kind of like putting more lemon pepper on top of more lemon pepper it cancels itself out because the plugins are so freaking good nowadays so just knowing that the plugins is so good nowadays stop complaining put your heart into the music you have all the tools you have the same interface as these engineers you have the same plugins you have the same fl studio as these producers you literally got the same drum kit that probably got the same samples that metro booming be using the same DAW, the same soft clipper you have all the stuff the only difference between you and them is the fact that they love making music you know they love making music you can't let them love making music more than you you gotta love making music just as much as them and put your heart into the game and you gonna blow i promise to you bro i promise to you bro you gonna blow i'm trying to blow with y'all but the thing about me is you can instantly tell from my mixes as soon as i press play you could tell i love making music go watch all of my videos you could tell i love making music go listen to features music you could tell he love making music go listen to metro's beats you could tell he love making beats because it's all about your love for the game that's the difference i'm trying to tell you that that's the difference between making it or not because some people they just make music for it's whatever you know, I, I rap yeah you know i rap film yeah, i got songs bro and that's what your music sound like it sounds like you just got songs it sounds like you just rap it sounds like you don't take it seriously because you're not putting your heart into it put your heart into it it's so easy for me to tell you to put your heart into it but putting putting your heart into it is not something that's easy you gotta really oh you got it's something that goes beyond us it goes it goes beyond you know us it goes beyond words it's like divine you feel me and that's what i'm talking about you know sometimes when it be three o'clock in the morning at stool you know god just be taking over you know like i don't know if y'all are religious and it don't even matter but it's just like the god the vibe the energy just starts taking over and it's like whoa this song was made go listen to um oh okay Young Thug, Future, Gunner, Baby, they said, oh, we was just messing around in the studio. The vibe was so good. And by the time we woke up the next morning, we had oh, OK. That song was a hit. That song was a soundtrack to people's life. That song brings back memories of people's life because the, the energy was genuine. Because the energy is genuine. Now people who listening to it, no matter when or matter where, they, gonna, they can make the connection. So on my all vocals bus, I would use the Avalon 737. And the Avalon is pretty interesting. You know, more tubes. It has trio tubes, which add even order harmonics and the vocal preset always is fat vocal. So amazing thing. You know, this is another one that's kind of like the CL1B where you get variable attack and release on an optical compressor. Very interesting as well. And you get the preamp, you get the EQ. This is just a complete channel strip that is absolutely incredible. And, you know, it's timeless. It's so perfect for hip hop and vocals. And then, you know, in a future studio, he has an 1176, uh, you know, a black face. And I'm pretty sure they use that for parallel compression, and, you know, because that's what it's so so good for being aggressive and just helping the key key you know sometimes future only does like a lead vocal that's it you know so you got to make the most out of that but that that lead vocal is damn good my boy so after that you know we got these basic delays nothing crazy and then after that you know seth he used to love to use the amx rmx you know that was his favorite reverb he sometimes even uses a stock d verb on room setting that's a great preset as well but the ams is just so perfect for hip-hop kind of like the ssl kind of like the avalon there's certain stuff that people just use because they know it's good it's certain ingredients that all chefs use because they know it's gonna make the soup it's gonna make that pot hit you feel me it's the same thing you know don't overcomplicate this music stuff y'all boys after that you got the air flanger you know seth used to love to use that as well stock preset you know seth is the type of dude you know r.i.p god bless this man's soul i feel like with making music he's not dead he's still here all I got to do is go listen to his music. He may not be here in the physical form, but that's what I always talk, talk about music. You know, making music is no joke because when people die, the first thing that people go to is their music. You feel me? So the music is what lives forever. Even though the person is not here, the music is living forever. He's living through his music, his mixes. You feel me like that? So that's why, like me, I don't take this mixing stuff as a joke, you know? And whenever I record somebody or I mix their music, I don't take it as a joke. I take it so serious because this, this, this is their legacy. This is their life. When they die, this is what people go to is their music, their videos, all that stuff. This is what they leave here on the earth, you know? So um, after that, we have the um, the uh, little uh, micro shift. You know, Seth also used to lose the 
um, even Ty H3000 for that doubler. And that's how Future used to get that dimension on his vocals too. All right, cool. Last thing, you know, NLS bus as well as the SSLG comp that would obviously be a part of those, um, you know, boards that Eric Manco has inside of their studio. So yeah, this was a pretty interesting video. All of this stuff is going to be here for free today. I hope you guys were able to learn something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. You know, don't forget to like. Um, go ahead and download the template. You're going to get the UAD feature pack for free. You're going to get the mix template for free. And last thing I want to say, too, is that, you know, when it comes to people dying, like, I never, never, never will charge people for, like, you know, I see people do that. They try to sell a Juice World template, and, like, the man is dead. Like, come on, bro. Like, when people die, you got to respect that at least, bro. Like, don't try to make a Juice World template and sell that bit. You feel me? Like, I'm giving you guys this template for free because this man is no longer here with us. And just out of respect, I just love his music. And, you know, I'm, I would never try to use somebody else's name to make money. You know, whenever you see somebody do that, they don't have no respect. They don't have no love for the game. So, guys, go ahead and download this down below. Just want to say don't forget to love making this music. Don't forget to love the game, bro. Rap every day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.